After an unexpected turn of events last time, I was apprehensive on the way to my next stop on the Acceptance Movement speaking tour, John Carroll University. Last time, we learned last minute that we weren't allowed to interview our audience members, the Washington Redskins cheerleaders. My fingers were crossed that this time, everything would go according to plan. I tried to remain calm as we started exploring Cleveland. Listen Lucy and the Acceptance Movement are my ways of spreading the message of self-love and less judgment to everyone I can. I want to help people see that they are not alone. We're spreading the Acceptance Movement to people around America to encourage them to work on accepting and loving themselves and to create a less judgmental world. My very first speaking tour takes us to Washington, D.C., Cleveland, Ohio, and my hometown, Pittsburgh. Welcome. 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 Welcome to the Acceptance Movement. I was definitely experiencing some anxiety. Come on, it's me. But overall, I was mainly excited to meet the students of John Carroll University. As professors, faculty members, men and women filed in to hear me speak, I realized this was our biggest crowd yet, and we finally had some dudes in the audience. Um, I was losing a lot of weight. I was worried to go to school every day. My grades were slipping. I was getting taken off campus on a stretcher. I had to leave embarrassingly in the middle of my classes. Ten years ago, the stigma around mental health was even worse, so the idea of going to therapy was so embarrassing to me. I'm getting my master's in clinical mental health counseling. So I've always been um, really passionate and interested in helping others. I um, struggled with an eating disorder and um, I decided that I wanted to pursue a career um, to be able to help other people who um, have gone through issues or are going through issue, issues similar to myself. That is awesome. Um, I wrote for my school paper. I became the opinion editor, so I chose what articles went into my section, and I wrote an article about my anxiety disorder. I admitted that I was going to therapy, and I wrote about that my anxiety disorder was currently defining me. And I think whether you've dealt with anxiety or dealt with mental illness or not, I think that's something that everyone can relate to. We've all had a problem that has completely consumed us, right? You wake up, you think about it, you go to school or work or class, you think about it. You walk, you talk, you work out, you come home, you're thinking about it nonstop and it just completely consumes you. The day the article came out, I was such a mess. I was like, why would I just tell thousands of people that I'm insane? Why would I tell all these strangers that maybe didn't see me getting taken off campus in a stretcher, that maybe just thought I was just a regular, run-of-the-mill student, why would I admit to them that I have anxiety disorder? I, I suffer from anxiety disorder, and um, a lot of my anxiety has been coming back the last few weeks, and it's just really hard on me. We always put on a facade for others. Uh, we never show everyone exactly who we always are when we're alone. I started getting all these messages. All of these people that had sat next to me in class that didn't know what I was going through, professors, faculty, that were like, oh my god, this is so brave that you told your story. I can't even tell you the weight that it lifted off my shoulders. I wasn't expecting that at all. And having strangers tell me that didn't have to unconditionally love me, that didn't even have to like me or even acknowledge that they read the article, having them reach out to me and accept what it was, it was like, oh my God, this isn't that big of a deal. Like, I put so much pressure on it. I was so worried about it, but I didn't think that no one else was worried about it because everyone is dealing with their own thing. And it was cool to them that I decided to be so open and share. And I think that's when the idea of Listen Lucy came to be, which was many years before when it actually came to be. I think it's harder accepting yourself because you see the good, the bad, and the ugly at all times. Uh, with others, you uh, choose what you see um, yourself. You're around 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The students I spoke with reaffirmed what I so firmly believe. It is very much harder to accept yourself than to accept others around you. But I'm so happy that they were comfortable enough to talk about their issues. The stigma surrounding mental health disorders isn't gone, but it's less prevalent than it was 10 years ago and there's no doubt that the acceptance movement is growing. 
I vow to accept that I am a work in progress. I vow to accept um, that my flaws don't make me damaged. They make me a better me. I vow to accept that I am striving for progress and not perfection. I vow to accept that I will be able to continue with my journey. Next time on The Acceptance Movement, we bring our tour home to Pittsburgh and learn the hard way just how necessary it is for us to be talking about mental health. <laughs>